This next plant that we're looking at is called stinging nettle. Uh, it gets its name because, well, it stings. Um, you will know stinging nettle if you touch it barehanded. Stinging nettle tends to like uh, damp places and it usually also likes uh, places that have had livestock. So in the back of old barns where there's old raspberries growing um, is a really good place. Uh, down by swamps, uh, in wetlands, in the forest are really, really great places to look for nettle. Um, so nettle, uh, do not harvest without gloves and long sleeves. Um, <laughs> It lives up to its name very, very well. Just uh, give me a second here. And I'm gonna put my glove on so I can show you a little closer up. So, uh, nettle plants are best harvested right about now. We're spring here in Canada and they're nice, small green shoots. Um, the uh, back of the leaves have small little hairs and that's what gives you the sting as well as the uh, stalk and it, it also has very very small little hairs if you look care carefully on the stems you can see those little hairs that's what gives it the sting once stinging nettle is uh, dried you can collect it and then just tie it upside down in a bunch somewhere um, nice and dry uh, once they're dried off, there's very little sting left and uh, you can have this in teas for other herbal things um, and of course it makes really really nice green in soap. Um, you can rip it up by the roots if you find it somewhere in the property that you don't want but if you want to continue to keep your patch, uh, just pick it like you saw me. You just kind of snap it off and um, you'll have yourself nettle for years to come. Our nettle is at the back of a very old barn. Now we're gonna move on to one of my favorite plants to use. Um, I use this particular plant and well it's actually most people consider it a weed in a number of my different soaps um, and in my bath teas uh, it's called plantain not plantain the banana plantain the weed sorry the birds are teaching their little ones to fly anyway so this plant here is a wonderful uh plant it um rejuvenates the soil so you'll see it struggling in uh, really poor soil conditions. This is our tractor path from the garage to the barn. And as you can see, the only green on this path is plantain. So plantain, there's broad leaf and skinny leaf or small leaf plantain. Um, you just pick it and you can dry it, dehydrator or in the sun or however you dry your stuff. Uh, the other great use for plantain is it's great for itches and stings. If you get stung by any kind of bee, hornet, wasp, whatever, you take the leaf and you chew it up. Um, your saliva uh, releases the healing properties in it. You spit out the leaf and the saliva and you would apply it like a poultice to wherever you got stung and within a very short period of time you'll notice that your sting is gone. Um, I am uh, highly allergic to bee stings and I've actually successfully used this to help uh, reduce my um, shock to the bee sting and help reduce the rash because it helps pull out the uh, uh, stinger. My old girl Tess coming to say hello. She's 12. So if you look, it grows, like I said, it's gonna rejuvenate all the soil down here in this really, really horrible area. Um, and as you'll notice, we get into the grassier parts, it's starting to look bigger and healthier, and that is completely normal. Uh, but in a pinch, any of it will do if you get stung. 
And of course, any of it will do dried and in your soap. Again, there's your leaf. It's very easy to pick. Sometimes um, it has pink on the bottom of it. Um, and as you can see, nice and soft, it's a bit of a shine to it. There's your plantain. And it doesn't taste bad. You can actually eat it in salads and stuff and it's good for you. This is one of my most favorite plants on the farm. This is comfrey. Um, comfrey is difficult to find if you can't uh, find someone with a root stock. You may have trouble finding it at nurseries. Uh, for me, it was quite difficult. I actually ended up bartering some turkeys for it. So comfrey has so many great uses from the leaves right down to the root stock. Um, it's, it's just a good all around plant. You'll have to Google and see all the uses for it. Uh, personally, I love having comfrey and mint tea, both hot and cold. It's uh, with some honey, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so comfrey, as you can see, we're starting to get some little flowers coming in here. Uh, the stalks, they have little hairs. So while you can harvest them uh, with just your hands, Gloves are recommended because those little hairs are like those little invisible slivers that you can't get out. Um, the leaves also have the little hairs all around it. You can kind of see them there. Um, I have my comfrey, I have a big plant of it here, but I also have just this summer, since my rootstock was strong enough, moved comfrey to the bottom of all of my fruit trees. Their taproot system is really, really long and they pull up amazing nutrients from the ground, which then helps the roots of my apple and cherry trees. They, uh, they just, they're just a great plant. Once they die off, their uh, leaves are really, really great mulch and um, really nutritious for all the plants that you mulch with them. So this is just another shot of a mullein plant I have on the property. Um, it's actually beside my really sad asparagus bed. But um, my husband is wonderful about not mowing it down because he knows that I use it for lots of different things. So next to that, we have some cedar. Um, cedar has really, really a beautiful, nice, warm smell to it. Uh, you can dry the cedar and use it in uh, teas, bath teas, uh, and it just adds a really nice earthy aroma. So it is spring here, so you'll have to forgive the patheticness of my lavender plants. They're just coming out of their winter hibernation. But um, so this is the full lavender plant. If you look down here, little sprigs of it are coming off of the old plants and this will turn into some nice lavender to use in soaps and salves and bath teas. So this is a lavender plant that I bought this spring because some of my older ones didn't make it through the winter so this is kind of a replacement one. Um, and I just wanted to use a word of caution to new soapers or uh, anyone wanting to use lavender. Um, the lavender buds are beautiful. Unfortunately, when you sprinkle lavender buds on the top of soap, uh, once dried, it looks like little brown mouse turds. So, um, as much as you might be dying to put it on your soap, I highly suggest that you don't. A better use of your lavender buds is to infuse them or like myself, I grind a lot of the buds up and use it in my soaps as a very light exfoliant and it, um, it will still turn brown, 
but that people know it's an exfoliant in the soap. They're not looking for um, beautiful colors and uh, it doesn't look like mouse turd all ground up. It's spring and the lilacs smell amazing. Uh, word of caution though, soapers, unfortunately, the buds do not stay purple. If you sprinkle them on soap, they turn brown and infusing them, um, the scent does not last. Very unfortunate because lilac has a beautiful fragrant um, smell that we all associate with the warm coming spring. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't carry through in soap, so um, you're just going to have to enjoy the lilacs as they are um, out of soaps. So this is a rose bush. Um, you'll be able to find wild varieties of this. This is a semi-wild variety. I've cultivated it through the last number of years. Um, but uh, the wild variety of roses are very fragrant and beautiful. Uh, you see, I've just got some, some buds coming in right here. Uh, once they fully open up, I pluck the petals and I either put them in the dehydrator or lay them out on a really hot sunny day and they dry in no time at all. Um, and I use them in toppings of my soap and in a number of my bath teas. Uh, you can also dry the buds, but just caution, they do take a little bit longer to dry than just the petals themselves. And the buds can cause a little bit of mold to happen on the top of your soaps. Whereas I don't seem to have that same problem with the petals. Um, so yeah, this is more of a wild variety. Um, they have very, very, very sharp thorns. They grow in bushes and they are very, very good about coming back every year all on their own. As you can see, the buds are just starting to think about coming out. So I can't wait for these to come out. They come out pretty close right after the lilacs. So I always have some nice fragrant smells going on here. So it's been about four days since I last posted about the roses. And I just wanted to show you how they look when they are in bloom. So there's a couple here that are ready for me to harvest. Um, I usually put a lid box, box of a lid on the ground uh, because sometimes these ones, when they're really ready to harvest, as soon as you shake them, the petals fall off. These ones aren't quite there yet, but uh, it's very simple. You just Gently pull them off. They just come right off. Um, on a nice sunny day, I will just leave this box with all the petals on my deck and it will um, dry them out. On a day like today, when it's overcast but I have petals that need to be done, I stick them in the dehydrator. Um, there's a few buds here that are ready for picking as well if I wanted to. Um, I don't need any buds at the moment, but you would just uh, break them off right there. Uh, there's no thorns right there on the plant. If you look, the thorns are just down a little bit further. Okay, hope that helps you out. These ones will maintain most of their color. They'll go a little bit uh, darker, a little bit uh, more purpley than the pink. And uh, then once you top them on soap, of course, they'll turn brown, but um, they still look good and people still know that they're rose petals.